tonight we have an international feel again we've got two guests uh one in geneva one in northamptonshire um and so we've got otis roberts hi otis you're in northamptonshire yeah hi. well next door to it in cambridgeshire but yeah, yeah sorry, adjacent. Sorry, but it's I'm the same it's okay it's i'm okay. getting my, i'm getting my shares mixed up okay uh, <laughs> hi otis hi, otis yeah. is a landscape architect and then yuichi kodai is in geneva who's an architect uh, zurich Oh, in Zurich. He's, I, yes. I'm, I, I need to, I need to study. My know, I need to study my <laughs> geography. Yeah, in Zurich. Sorry. So yeah. So anyway, Switzerland and the UK. Um, and uh, the reason we've brought these two guys together tonight to to talk to us is because they have collaborated on a really exciting project last year called the Chalk Garden. So welcome to both of you. It's really Thank nice you. to have you both here. And thank you for for um, putting together this presentation for us. So I think it's probably as easy to go into the presentation because that kind of describes who you are and what you do. Um, sure. as, as we're going into screen share, just to say that in the chat box, we've got um, Yuichi and Otis's um, uh, website details so that you can look uh, look them up and, and learn a little bit more about them. So, so Otis, yeah, do you want to go into screen share? Sure, yeah. I'd like to say, that first of all, thank you for everybody for attending oh. today and for the people that are hopefully going to be attending afterwards. And um, we'll give you a little bit of an insight in this presentation into who we are um, and uh, and how we came about this whole uh, thing that we collaborated on. And, and, and I'm great that everyone's here to share that with us. So um, I'll go into screen share. Let me hope that this works okay yep. you know how technology works sometimes yeah okay. I'll, let, I'll let you know what's happening oh we're, we're not we're not at the first slide that's the only no, thing that's, we just no. need to go back to the first slide that's the uh, technology for you eh? yeah, oh, yeah there we go oh yeah if you if you want to get to the first slide before you go into screen share for sure you're giving the game away now because we had a little run through before everybody came in so that's why um we were a little way down the line there that's it. Okay, brilliant. So we're looking good. Okay. Great. Fire away. Okay. So um, as, as and, and no mentioned, my name's Otis Roberts. I'm a landscape architect and I'm based in Peterborough in Cambridgeshire. And uh, my colleague is uh, obviously Yuichi um, and he's an architect and uh, based in Zurich. And we've come together to, to put this uh, chalk garden together. Um, and it was a competition that we were asked to enter by... Q Gardens. Um, so if I, that's, this is me, Otis Roberts, that's my logo. I'm going through and it's a little bit about my background. Um, I studied garden design, um, but after coming out of a career of sales, I was, my, my journey started from a friend called Dave when we were training together and I asked him, well, what can I do? And he said, what are you interested in? And I said, well, gardening. So he said, okay, there's a city and girls course that's running and that, that, that's where the journey started. And it's led me to qualify as a H&D uh, garden designer. And I went on to take further studies to, to get my degree and my postgrad in landscape architecture. As mentioned, um, I was born in Peterborough and I'm still in Peterborough in Cambridgeshire. Um, my bit of my landscaping background, I started working as a landscaper at the same time I started my uh, studying uh, and that was working for a chap called Adam Frost um, and he had a company at the time called New Ground Landscapes which uh, got me involved in many uh, domestic uh, gardens um, in the building, which was a great, great experience um, because I found taking the, uh, you know, getting hands on and getting the finger fingernails dirty and going into the, the designing field it helps you translate both sides of it um, of, of, of a skill set um, in 2019 was asked by uh, a couple that are based in Hokkaido in northern part of Japan to uh, uh, see if that will be interested in that was me myself and two other colleagues actually three other colleagues interested in um, building their uh, Chelsea flower show entry which was called the Campo Noniwa Garden um, and we managed to achieve a gold medal uh, which was a little bit of a surprise it, in fact it was a big surprise because even though we've been to Chelsea Flower Show before it's always been building gardens for other people but this time we were, we were consulting and uh, material sourcing and going through the whole process um, and we had the uh, the two designers from Japan come over um, intermittently um, so to, to actually put it together ourselves and get, achieve a gold on the first shot was just absolutely amazing. Really hard work, though. super, super hard work. 
some of the work that I um, get involved in beyond um, competition work like the chalk garden, I'll, I'll do. I'll be. I'll be putting my hands to any type of uh, garden projects, landscape uh, projects as well. So on my left hand side, um, or actually, should I say, on the left hand side of the screen, there is a, a balcony for a. Um, a restaurant uh, that was based in Canary Wharf, and that was um, installing planters and um, other as well, potted plants, etc. On the right hand side, there's a garden that I uh, worked on, must be about five or six years ago. I need to update the pictures actually. Lovely, lovely couple. They had a blank canvas of a garden, and um, it involved uh, co designing the garden and uh, putting in the planting scheme, um, which was a, a, a real treat actually to do something on such a great scale and start from uh, like nine centimeters parts and letting them grow and putting the trust in the, in the design process. Um, uh, and obviously that takes a bit of time to see, you know, see the fruition of what you're putting into the ground. This slide here, this is uh, um, some stills from the Campo Naniwa garden. Um, that we uh, installed and consulted on at Chelsea Flower Show. Um, I can talk a bit more about that, but what I want to do is uh, try and focus on the uh, chalk garden. But that was a really, really interesting project to work on as well. And I'll hand over to my colleague, Mr. Yuichi. Hi, um, my name is Yuichi Kodai. I'm um, an architect qualified in the UK, and I was born and grew up in Kyoto. Um, uh, next please, yes. And I, well, I'm trained as an architect, but with a Swiss uh, practice called Herzog and Demeron. Um, a lot of people probably know uh, from, uh, let's say, Bird's Nest Beijing Olympic Stadium or uh, Tate Modern in London. And um, uh, there are quite a few in the States and, and actually every major city, there is a building of Herzog and Demeron. And mainly I was working on many uh, museums and uh, actually housing developments and so on. Um, but uh, my most influential one in, in their practice when I was working on the project was the Peretz Art Museum in Miami. And uh, I was, which I will show you later and in slides. And uh, after Herzog and Demeron, I moved back to uh, Kyoto where I grew up from. Um, I, I left Kyoto when I was 18 to study uh, architecture in London, but I did not know what the Japanese working conditions were like. So I was very curious to, to learn about um, Japanese method of working. So I went back there and made, became a part, made a partnership with a, a Japanese contemporary artist called Kohei Nawa, and the studio is called Sandwich. And, and uh, a sandwich studio uh, was used to be a sandwich factory, so it was named so. And in this in this uh, studio, I managed to make a temple pavilion, which is called Kote, uh, which is coming in, in a minute. Then afterwards, I moved back to uh, Zurich. Uh, my spouse is Italian, so that's why I'm based in Switzerland, which is close, very close to Italy. Then um, now. <laughs> We are going making a chalk garden with all this. And this is the Peretz Art Museum in Miami, in Herzog Nemo. I was in charge of uh, uh, roof and the garden aspect of this, of course, music inside the museum too. But these two elements are my babies in this project. And this is the first time I uh, had my hands on to the greenery uh, with the architecture. Um, so in Miami, there was a lot about uh, you know, plants and jungles and all these aspects. So we wanted to integrate within this building. And the screen, like the roof, provides a shade for hanging, uh, to, to hang around uh, on the platform. And next project, uh, next slide please, what is? And this is the project I've done in Japan. This is a temple pavilion in um, Zen temple. Uh, the Zen temple asked us to design a kind of, um, museum slash building which can uh, have a place of contemplation and there was an existing building before but uh, we managed to turn down the building and make this uh, brand new uh, space and there's a Japanese garden in front of this uh, building but um, that was done by uh, uh, Nakane Kinsaku uh, who made the Adachi Museum Gardens and 
we, which we had to deal with. And uh, the way we came up with this was to really create a stone garden in front uh, or below to, to uh, speak and not to speak about this uh, gardens. Next slide, please. And this has an approach over the bridge uh, to go into the temple pavilion. Next one. And inside we made a kind of art installation, which I think is also a garden uh, that has a, a space of contemplation. It's completely dark space, but there is a pool of water. And in there you sit down for 25 minutes to look at the uh, uh, motion of light or which reflects on the water surface. Next one. And once you see this uh, installation of in the roof, uh, you come down to see uh, the garden to contemplate what you had seen in the roof installations. So this is my second garden. And a third garden is the achievement with Otis, and that is his chalk garden. Otis. And if I can add to that, Yuichi, as well, yeah. um, I think this image is it was quite important, really, because that was one of our leads when we were first... Uh, oh, actually, shall I just explain how me and Yuichi got together? Um, so. Uh, I was working with a, a chap called Tatsuya uh, Shirai and uh, Yuichi, Yuichi was working on a project and Tats and Yuichi got called together to uh, work on a, a green roof. So this, yeah, there's many other projects, Yuichi, that you've worked on as well, not just the, the two or three. There's other ones that you've been involved with. So, um, and, and we got together uh, 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 through that for that union from working on a, um, a green roof project. Um, so when we and Yuichi got together, we were talking about how we were going to approach the uh, competition, competition entry that we, uh, uh, or the commission that we won. Um, so we were cross-referencing uh, ideas and uh, Yuichi referenced this image and uh, there was a lot of uh, information um, that Yuichi pulled from here uh, to enlighten me of how we could go about it. So if I just have a look at the, if we just have a look at the, the image there, you've got some of the finer stone and the larger stone and we wanted to uh, reflect some of the idea into how we were going to create a contemporary space within the, the uh, octagon. So that, that, that's, a, I think, Yuichi, that's a strong reference there yeah, that we good. spoke about. Mm -hmm. So, okay, onto the chalk garden itself. Um, what I've got here is just a video, a little video that was made by a lady called Georgina. I can't remember her name, Yuichi. Her name oh, is Georgina. Oh. Yeah, okay. And um, so I'm just going to play this, and hopefully it will give an essence of, uh, of what the actual internal space was about. So hopefully it's not too glitchy, but we'll give it a go and see how it turns out. So um, the Japanese festival that me and Yuichi took, play, uh, took part in um, was held at the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew. Um, and the festival was to uh, cross-culture um, uh, what happens in Japan and UK and bring the cultures together. Um, our position in this was to create an installation or a garden um, that was placed in the temperate house. Um, and our main thoughts was how we were going to relate this garden to the, the, the dimensions and to the shape of the octagon that we had to put this installation in. So for those who don't know where Kew Garden is, I think everybody must know where Kew Gardens is, do they? They must do, must do. So it's based in Richmond and there on the screen, you can see in yellow to the bottom, uh, to the bottom to the right, there's uh, the little uh, uh, shading of yellow of the temperate house. Um, and there on the right hand side, you can see where it's been highlighted in yellow. That's where we had to work. Um, 
let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so the, the design elements. So the, the way that we approached it, we tried to think of many different ways of, uh, of, of, of what we're going to put into this into this space. How we were, how is it going to work? Um, uh, we spoke about using uh, on on the ground because we wanted to. We wanted to use the reference. Obviously, it was a uh, Japanese and UK exchange, and we wanted to reference Japanese gardens. But what we were fearful of was uh, doing it uh, or creating a, a scheme that was cliche uh, Japanese. I want to step away from that because otherwise, uh, when it comes to designing, you're just uh, putting a toothpaste. Um, sorry, my uh, old lecturer used to say toothpaste design, where we just take one thing and we just put it into another place. And we can see many examples of that in, in design of all sorts. You know, we, we'll just lean on one style and we put it somewhere else and then we take it and put it somewhere else. And, and sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work and it just becomes too cliche. And we thought that, especially with Japanese gardens, everyone thinks of Japanese gardens as being bonsai, uh, bamboos and et cetera, et cetera, which, you know, which is fine because you have to do have some kind of cultural references there, but we didn't want to go too cliche. So we had to think about the ground plane. We had to think about the light value as well, because within the octagon, it's a, just basically a big open greenhouse um, and the sunlight just pouring in. There's also other considerations that we had to think about was the approaches from um, one uh, from the Northern block and the main temperate house. Um, we had to think about viewers perspectives um, when they were looking at the garden, because for us, uh, the garden kind of changed. I'll, I'll go more into the backstory, but I won't go into it just yet. But the, the whole rules behind what we designed initially, it changed. So um, we had to think about, well, how are people going to view this garden? Because it's not just a garden from a picture perspective. It's a garden from you. It's been split into two sides um, and people had to view the garden from two sides. It wasn't just one solid picture. Um, and we had to hold people's attention. Um, uh, as they were going through the, the, the greenhouse. And uh, the plants that we were putting in there as well, we had to think, well, what type of plants we're going to put in there? How are these plants are going to work within that space in regards to uh, the ground and the verticality and the light value as well? How are, we gonna, how are the plants going to benefit to, to show the best out of the garden? Chalk. Many people have asked us, why did we come to Chalk? Uh, Juichi, I don't know if you wanted to, uh, yes. um, to the, speak the, on that. Yeah, the Chalk, uh, from the very beginning, we wanted to use Chalk. And <laughs> the, the Chalk um, it is, a, is a kind of material that I was also always fascinated by. Um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a kind of representative uh, minerals or uh, uh, subsoil in the uh, southern part of England. And, and there's you no know, chalk cliff uh, of Dover or Seven Sisters. And, and um, it, I always like the fact that it's very white or beige and, and it's kind of a texture or, or a shadow that the storm produces somewhat represents a kind of tone of uh, British cities. And also like the fact that um, the, um, it's a sediment of calcium, which is, I think it's a, it's a, it's a sediment of plants. And, and that was produced from a million years ago. And yeah. within the chalk, there is also a flint that is a black element and that is a sediment of animals. And, and, and these, these two put together, it, it creates a kind of con concept or contextual concept that, uh, you know, um, we, we, we as a, you know, a na um, habitants of uh, planet Earth, you know, whether Japan or UK, we all have this basic element of sediments. And, and that kind of unifies the idea that um, we, we come from the you know, sea and also stands on a similar uh, soil. I was going to add to that, Yuichi, and and the chalk. Yuichi mentioned so there were so much elements that we that we put into this. So as as we're going through these slides, I'll, I'll speak in some. Yuichi mentioned the, about the shadows. Um, when I think as designers, um, uh, and we're all designers. Anybody that's got any kind of interest in uh, 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 of of life and what everything's around, we're all designers. Um, so our thoughts were. 
if we put this um, number one, we wanted the light value from the chalk because it was bright. Um, that would give us the, the the light value from daytime, and that give us light value from nighttime. Um, and that's really really important when it comes to putting uh, hard uh, hard landscaping down on the ground. Um, and the other thing that was discussed, me and you each were back and forth, and it wasn't as easy and relaxed as you each is saying. We had many, we had many back and forth tussles of how we were going to put this down. I wanted to use granite. You each said no, we need to use something that's local, that ties in the Japanese film and as well as like reference in the UK and back to chalk. But we we had so many discussions about the size of the uh, material that we're going to put down on the ground because of the the, the size. So everything had to work relative um, to the space. Um, and how would that work relative to the space? And, and I think that later on that will come out in 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 the in the images that we show of, of how that worked. If I move to the next slide, so there we have the octagon again of where we were working. Okay, and uh, we've got a video here as well in this in this slide, um, and it just puts down. I'll, I'll go through some of the design concepts and how we got to how, where we got. And I'll pause it throughout. So there's the greenhouse. At the same time when we had the show going on, there was Fuchi, I forgot the lady's name. Uh, Chiharu Shiota. Yeah, and if you just, uh, maybe just a quick brief uh, about her work or what, what she was about and how she was next to us. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, this lady was putting a, the, the, the well, red Chihar strings. Chiharu is basically an artist who's fascinated by life and, and she represents her emotions and... Uh, hardness or, or um, let's say, journey aspect of the life into uh, a, a representation, uh, into a kind of installation that um, is achieved through the string. Uh, she often uses a black string, or more recently she used a lot of red string to represent that conditions. And yeah. she was asked to uh, produce a large installation in the center part of the Pempered House. Uh, in red string, which made them stunning um, 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 spectacles. And, and as I said, that was in the main the main building. So we had visitors coming from the main building, um, which was really really cloaked in a lot of green. It was really really dense at times when you're when you're moving through that space. If you haven't been into Kew Gardens, it's it's reasonably dense. So there's people coming from that side, and this is the other side. So we were sandwiched in between these two green spaces. This is the other side of the temperate house. And then going on to where we were. Um, and so on one side, you had uh, the main block. On the left, the other side, you had the other green block. So this is the space that we had to work with. Within that space, we've had, uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. So the octagon. Um, and little known to us in our first submission to, to, to the show, uh, to, the, to the commission, um, we... There was that we didn't know that there was the, the space in between moving from left to right was going to be as big. Um, so we had to change our submission and we had people that were moving from one block to the other side. Um, and this is a strong uh, point as well, which I learned from Yuichi. And this is one of the many battles and I'll talk to you, talk to you through this now. I, from a landscape architecture side, I, um, Sometimes, I, I mean, maybe me personally, I wanted to hide things, you know, I wanted to keep people's eye um, within the greenery and what's going on. From the architecture side, Yuichi said, which he was right. He was, this is one of the many times I, I, I like to admit it. Not that I'd like to admit it. He said, no, 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 let's see, let's view the architecture. We've got the pillars within the building. Let's use the architecture. Off that, we thought, well, how can we use the architecture of the building? Because we're going to we're going to have pillars that are within the in the building. How we can how can we use the architecture to uh, our advantage? So we had people that were moving from left and right. The archi the architecture uh, was going to be our friend, not our enemy. Um, use what's there. Let people see the architecture because again, it's a it's a classical building. And ultimate. Oh, I beg your pardon. Ultimately, we came up with, let's scroll through, technology, eh? So we had moving, people moving from left to right, the architecture of the building. And then we came up with this image, um, which was the final layout, which we settled with um, on how we were going to use the space. 
So you can see we organized our greenery at a 45 degree. Um, that 45 degree played a massive part um, because uh, as I actually, I'll, I'll play this and talk. Okay, so we had people coming from left hand side and the right hand side. On the left hand side of the screen, that was the main building. And that's where we thought the majority of people would be coming through. And the reason why we turned the garden on 45 degree is so that the garden had a polyfocal, uh, oh, yeah, say polyfocal, multifocal face. There wasn't one face because you're moving through the center. So, what we wanted to try and do is to drag people's attention to a face all the time. So, at the lower of the screen, as you're coming through from one side, um, your eye will shoot through on one side, and but on the left hand, on the, the lower side, your eye will be hit by panels of uh, interest. And then panels of interest would always be staggered. As you move uh, through this space, you got closer and closer, and we had some main features within that space um, that consisted of some aces and a, a dish still reflective water feature. As you stand within the space, in the center, you, you, you're, you're centralized and you start to look at the, the space within. It's what we want to try and pull people's eyes to the, the detail, not the overall whole concept of the garden. And from there, you can look beyond that space where you're looking at the detail of the aces, um, because we have some really prime specimens from Water Slokai, absolutely fabulous nursery absolutely fabulous and they're really really helpful and uh, the, the people that helped us again the pot and co um they sponsored us with a a, a quart and iron dish so as you stand in the center you get a, a feel of the whole space on one side and the other side then as you're going through the space you can look back and then the face of the garden changes the whole perspective changes so you don't see this face that you saw on the lower side you don't see as much because your eye starts racing through along the lines you start seeing the face on the, the upper side if you're looking back and for the people that are coming from the right hand side and thus created the chalk garden So the internal space, um, we had so many things that we had to deal with. Um, firstly, that's a space that if I, if I, if I'm looking, we, we had been a grade one listed building and being Kew Garden and being the, key, the Queen's property, <laughs> the amount of paperwork <laughs> that was amazing. I think we spent more time going through legal paperwork and if you mess it up, uh, you have to leave the planet and a spot and a fingernails and and to even down to the point of that the uh, columns, and if you want to come in on this, you actually come in on this, the columns um, that were painted to, to protect the, uh, the uh, to protect them were painted on super expensive paint. If there's any chips and they had to do any touch-ups, they had to repaint the whole column. Um, and that was a, a, a key issue. Um, you can see at the base of the columns, you had to wrap cellophane, uh, uh, what's it called again, Yuichi? We had to wrap around the bottom. We just had to wrap things around the bottom to protect them. Mm -hmm. Another issue that we had was that the, uh, the, 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 the flooring is a vaulted uh, ceiling is that a correct term Yuchi? yeah it's vaulted yeah it's a vaulted ceiling so um it was uh when when the building was made in the 1800s um it was made out of brick vaulted uh brick vaults so we had weight issues which were a major concern and um the insurance uh, uh <laughs> reflected that as well so this is um on one of the days um after we've been inside and and, and looking at the space we got the plants in um, I'd say that the amount of times these plants have been in and out of that space was amazing. Um, and when it comes to doing these uh, uh, kind of um, installations or any kind of show gardens, et cetera, it's one thing putting it down on paper. When you get it into the space and seeing the plants within the space and how they're going to work, it's totally a different thing. You can see we've got some Ilex balls there. They didn't go in. That was another... <laughs> that was another uh, <laughs> bone of contention between myself and Yuichi about should we keep this in, should we uh, uh, take this out? So there was a lot of back and forths um, in making this, the whole decision-making process. And you see that Yuichi's just there having a look. 
um, <laughs> and I'm just hiding behind the pillar. But those are some of the main plants that we use. Oh, also add as well. Um, we, when we had it down on paper, the, the acer that's closest to us, and you've got the, the acer palmatum, the, the red palmatum at the back, we ended up switching sides um, with, with them too, because uh, um, if you have a look at the, the entrance on the top left-hand side, that was the main um, uh, glass house where everybody, the majority of people that were coming through would come through from that side. So we, we, we swapped them around because we thought the Acer would be, the Acer that was red would be more beneficial being the first impact plant. Um, so yeah, th th that's, that's us there. We had uh, uh, Will Harrison and Tatsuya Shirai. Tatsuya Shirai is a massive landscaper along with Will. Um, uh, absolutely great landscapers and great people to have with us um, to, 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 to assist. Um, there's myself, um, I'm bending down there, really stiff-legged, uh, <laughs> trying to uh, get these, uh, these, you know, just to, to, just to put the plants in there to see how, what it looks like. Um, there we go, got Tats and Will when we were laying out the rocks. Oh, and the rocks, if I could speak about the rocks, and please, Richie, please come in. Um, the rocks there, the rocks that we ordered initially were to be super super clean rocks because we were going on something to be really really stark and be ultra contemporary and when the rocks turned up and this is what we were told the rocks would be clean they'll be super super clean there'd be no problems with them at all they turned up some of them were clean some of them were green we were in absolute <laughs> tears the thing that we had with this as well when it comes to install we uh, it wasn't like a normal show garden we had five days um q gave us five days and that was it so everything we had to get there and with all the logistics of the public being on site and you know public are amazing we're, we're all amazing we go to the places where we're not supposed to be going so whilst we we're putting this together the amount of people that came through and said oh can we have a look it was like no 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 we don't want to you know we do it. so it, it there was so much back and forth but in regards to the stone um there was uh we, had, we were in tears um but then we used it to our advantage because when we start to bring the stone in to have a look at them we thought well actually this stone complements the clean stone and the flint that we had in between um on, on the base and um, plus uh this stone gave us a feeling of age um which in japanese gardens you know that some of it well a lot of it i suppose you eat some of it is is about age and the, the timelessness of uh the installation um and there we are again, looking happy with ourselves, but we're really tired and uh, hungry most of the time. And so going on to the uh, actual chalk garden. So um, as I mentioned, uh, the, the Acer on the far side that was put there to, um, to pull a lot of interest. It was attention grabbing from the main aspect of, 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 of entry, the main point of entry. And if you notice as well, we uh, had to raise the, oh, another aspect of, of the garden. We had to raise the uh, garden because it was a vaulted ceiling. All the plants were had to be kept in their pots. Um, and if you go back to the first image, if you can remember the first image, we had plastic sheeting down just for uh, watering and to catch water. We had to create tankards of, of water underneath all the plants. And there we go. There's another image. Um, with the uh, smooth stone and some of the, uh, oh, yeah, you can see that on the bottom there, some of the, the green stones there. Um, that was on the, this is on the left-hand side of the image and we've got the dish uh, that was uh, passed to us by Pot and Co. And I'll go through some of these without talking because I think I've done quite a bit of talking and I guess hopefully there'll be plenty of answers for you to uh, uh, questions and uh, for us to give you some answers um can i just uh add some um please um info um can you go back to the um ace uh, red aces image of course please. Okay, so um, as as it was described in diagram, um, the, the the garden uh, was organized in, in forty five degree diagonal, and 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 we tried to express that through the positioning of these rocks. And what this rock does uh, when you walk through the aisle uh, of three meters is that um, it gives a sense of space uh, and the distance. Um, the way that the rocks are positioned 
gives you a kind of gives you almost like uh, three to four foot steps wide and that gives you a reference point to where you could see the garden from and uh, as it's diagonal uh, when you look at the, this garden from straight point uh, sometimes you see the head of stone you sometimes you see side of the stone and and um, probably the length length of stone or chalk let's say um, and that's a kind of a point that I want to uh, express. So every, every step you make in this garden will have different uh, features and aspect to discover. And, and that, that was the point of uh, chalk garden for um, you know, English uh, uh, culture. Because uh, the, the way that Japanese make the garden um, is, is to look at, the, look at um, compositions of stones and, and, and the plants. But also, um, you know, um, once you have a look at compositions, you start to see uh, the faces of stones and, uh, and the plants. And that's that I want to bring in in this English context. And um, this chalk stone is, is also going along with uh, uh, ferns that we chose. Uh, the fern is, is, is um, as a plant that probably live from the you know, when, when the chalk was formed. And this exists every continent on this planet. So that was very important um, uh, plant. And um, when, uh, in a diagram, once you, uh, it was explaining that once you get to the center, you start to realize uh, as several aspects. In this view, particularly, uh, the focus point was the uh, orange, uh, red acer. It had an amazing uh, branches and sculptural aspect of this form, so people could admire this 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 uh, um, statical uh, beauty. Then you start to see the view corridors be between, uh, you know, be uh, through the bamboo screens. Otis, can you go to the next? Sure. And 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 uh, and, and on the other side, uh, we create the kind of um, a more um, can I say? green like green uh, garden and we had uh, a pond let's say water basin uh, inserted in this uh, field of chalk and um, this became a place where you can discover several elements so in this case uh, in this picture the acer is green but it starts to turn orange towards the end of the show and, and uh, the black basins actually uh, is uh, kind of, um, it's basically reflecting pond, but as it is black, um, it breaks the you know, chalk field and, and uh, uh, creates a kind of extra verticality within this flat field. And this reflection is enhanced by uh, positioning of bamboos and the horsetail. The hostel is inside a pond, so that um, um, you started to see the uh, the space almost below the, the, the chalk field. That's very interesting, and that um, it, it also I, I also like the fact that it looks like oil or pond of oil. Uh, that <laughs> also refers <laughs> to the, the concept of um, the flint. And, and that these elements you really start to discover and some people are making sketches on this point and uh, you know uh, ladies are talking about oh what's this what's that and it, it, that's the purpose of this garden is really for people to really see and be curious about each elements of uh, stones and greens and water and discover um, what they are really curious about and um, how could they talk about these elements between, you know, their friends or, or family, and or maybe uh, intellect. And and and, and the, the garden is there not just as a picture, but also the element to kind of contemplate within your uh, thinking. And 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 um, as it look very simple, but. Um, it, it comes back to you uh, as you after you've seen it, and and, and the multiple uh, dimensions and perspective uh, that creates also a different view. And uh, probably majority of people did not understand that, but that's okay because that's that's the part of the um, 
the process of garden. And I think um, this is, uh, this aspect was not planned initially with Otis. We were focused on how do we create it and how do we design it. Mm. But after we, we made this garden, we realized that was actually the point of our garden and, and, and which Q really wanted for. And, and um, this, uh, this um, aspect really uh, is probably coming from the way I grew up in Kyoto, where I was surrounded by lots of uh, traditional gardens. Uh, I was you know, delivering newspaper to some of the most important temples or world heritage. And, 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 and uh, each garden is not just a picture, but also a philosophical uh, contemplation place. And this aspect came to uh, came together in, in this uh, chalk garden project. Okay, so I think that's the kind of um, <laughs> talk was, uh, points. If you want you, to add anything, or just... yes, yeah, you, we talked about the the ridges as well, and and how that complemented the forty five degrees. How we turned the, and the reason why we turned the 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 garden for the forty five degrees. You mentioned you each year again about ma and the idea, the the the, the understanding of ma and what space is as well, um, because I think sometimes you have the tendency of of not allowing space um which is just as much as important as mass um and that works in so many different levels um when we were setting out the stones you each i don't remember a time we were setting them out and we were trying to uh find out uh, trying to find you know what's the best best spacing between each of the chalk ridges and we aligned some of them so that we had a good amount of chalk filled so you could see a good amount of white space as um in between and some of the other spaces was condensed which the, the the lines or the chalk ridges took you to certain aspects it, within the, the chalk garden and beyond outside of the chalk garden. That was a, when you mentioned about Ma. Mm -hmm. is it, is that, am I pronouncing that right? Ma. Yeah, Ma. Yeah, yeah, Ma. And, and we had that as well, um, um, which we discovered again, you each, uh, 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 when people were, when we moved from the main temperate um, uh, enclosed spaces to this space, and because most of our elements were light, but they were massed in certain areas, the release that you had from the, the, the main space, which was really, really dark and green and lush and jungly, to something which was this, it just changed the atmosphere instantly. Um, we knew that we had to get some of that, but we didn't, obviously, without the everything being in the space we didn't realize how much it actually did work so you know the the theory of like from your 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 background as well luigi that came into um into massive play when it comes to the install um and putting the bamboos in there because the bamboos the verticality just lifted the space as much as the light play as well that that played a, a massive massive part all this maybe i can you can flip uh next pictures and then talk, sure. uh, talk about some points. So this is the uh, picture that shows the, the side face of the chalk stones in relation to the column and the fern. Okay, next one. Um, help me with this. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really bad in Latin names. I don't want to use too much, uh, um, too many flowers. No, no. What, what, what's the name of this flower? Oh, um, it's an enemy. An enemy black um, swan, I believe it is. Yes, um, right. We didn't want to use too many uh, uh, flowers um, because um, we didn't want to take uh, uh, the attention away from the structure and the architectural elements that we had in the garden through um, just beauty aesthetics um, of one inv individual plant. But we did want to put some in there, here and there, um, because um, we just thought that it was kind of necessary. Yeah. Next one. Okay. okay, so this is a picture about uh, verticality uh, of, um, of uh, bamboos and horsetail. If you look at the picture on the right, right hand side, the reflection on the black water surface really continues into the ground, which is the intention. Okay, next. And the relationship between the column and, and, and the ridges, uh, chalk stone ridges. And so how how they create a relationship and also uh, a shadow uh, and the contrast when the sun hits. And and that was one of the beautiful uh, um, uh, 
things that we found with the that I mentioned earlier about the stone, but we will look at we're looking for pure white stone. Um, but having the green there just gave it age, um, mm -hmm. which after we spent about an hour with our hands in our heads and that we couldn't get any more stone there, it's going to be a logistical nightmare. We installed it and we said, well, actually, it, it works in our favour. It definitely did work in our favour. And stone, uh, chalk stone lands on the uh, green Irish moss. Uh, we could not get hold of them. Uh, Japanese moss uh, or Japanese uh, species or similar species moss, so we substitute it with Irish moss. Okay. Yeah, and some details. And when when the yeah acers overlaps with other greens, it it and in the white, it 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 was really um, breathtaking uh, scenery. Yeah, and I think we've come to the last slide. That's the last slide there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Do you want to come out of uh, screen share and we can we can have a little chat? I think um, it's so interesting to hear you talking about this. And I think possibly because it was last autumn, enough time has passed for you both to kind of I know what show gardens are like. And, and, and I think it's nice for you both to be honest about the tricky bits, because sometimes you know, everybody says, oh, you know, it was it all was fine and it's all wonderful. But actually, the reality of it is you're working with a client and you've got this stupid deadline and you've got to work with what they're saying. And so I think it's really good to hear you reflecting on that because, uh, you know, it's such a it can be such a nerve wracking thing. Um, how prescriptive were Q about the design and, you know, did, did they interfere with what you were doing or did they just leave you alone? Shall I go? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, no, they, they were they, they were amazingly brilliant. The people and the staff themselves were brilliant, absolutely brilliant, mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant. And, and, and I think with Q, it's it's a it's a it's a bit of a beast. There's one side Q, which is like the Royal Botanical Garden, the Queen, and etc. And then you have the people that work within that that have got an absolute love for what they do. Um, and I suppose that's the, 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 coming from sales. I come from a sales background into horticulture. Is 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 that you find that with people who, who into design uh, horticulture, they've got a love for what they do. So you know, so they weren't prescriptive at all. They were, they were the most helpful people, um, mm. and yeah, encouraged us and couldn't do enough. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not and, just saying that. No, 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 no. I understand that. That that's that's fine. And and of course, Wendy's put a notice up saying, "I can't wait to go back and see this." But of course, the garden was was a temporary installation, wasn't it? So, how long was the was the festival up for? How long did it last? It was about four four weeks mm -hmm, think, mm -hmm. during the um, yeah autumn season, October. Yeah. And how many other installations were there? So we saw the lovely red string, the hanging string, um, and your garden. So with how many more um, installations were there? I, I think, um, I don't, I can't tell how many, but uh, throughout the Kew Garden, they spread some moment okay. or, or to, to see, uh, you know, so, so they, they had the Momiji Gary Taylor's, which is uh, um, 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 <laughs> maple leaf hunting trail, let's say. Right. <laughs> Right. translation and, and so they can go around many places to have a look at the essence of Japanese gardens. Okay. Um, a, a, a very practical question from Susan about the accommodating the depth of the large trees. Was there ramping the entrances to, to cope with all of that? There was, uh, yeah, there was some ramping, but we needed <laughs> more muscle. <laughs> <laughs> We needed muscle trying to get it up from the base and trying to put all the plants and get them around. Um, and and on, on one or two of the trees, what we had to do is uh, root prune um, because otherwise they would be coming out of the ground way, way, way too big. So we yeah. had to root prune some to, um, um, to get them into the space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if I could launch a yes. more sort of philosophical question. Um, now we, you touched on this briefly and I, we talked about it a bit more in the, before the event. This whole problem of how you can use the elements of Japanese gardens as a design element in the West. Um, the, you know, the culture is so different. Um, and uh, certainly in Britain, there has become a, and there's a, quite a long history of creating Japanese gardens, which you know, if you look back historically, um, a lot of those gardens were created in the early 20th century and they have often very little Japanese about them. They were like an excuse to do something exotic and different 
and, and, and Japanese was a kind of label that made, somehow made them socially acceptable. Um, and now we have a lot of Japanese gardens made, which are, you know, we can look at them one way and say, this is just incredibly, you know, a really cliche pastiche. And the trouble is that's colored a lot of people's perceptions. And, you know, part of that is to you, we have a sort of almost a knee jerk reaction. You know, we see a, Jap a maple or a, a bamboo and we think, oh, Japanese. But in fact, there's many other ways of using those plants. And um, so some of the best Japanese gardens I've seen have been ones that have, you know, not used any Japanese plants at all, but have entered into the spirit of choosing plants that work particularly uh, effectively, uh, that, that somehow capture the Japanese aesthetic, but are absolutely not typically Japanese. Um, any, any thoughts on that? Um, basically, you know, the Japanese garden, let's say storm gardens, they mm. were protected in 14th or 15th century. Mm, mm, mm. And we have, I mean, the, the storm gardens that we see over there and over here, yeah. you know, they're basically ideas that stands on, you know, 500, 600 years old. Mm. So, um, you know, I, I was there in Kyoto, that's very historic. And, and, and um, there's an also sense that, you know, we want to move on sometimes. Mm. And when, yes. during the time that, you know, uh, you know, myself is in Europe and, and, and I'm now talking to you guys with a you know, Western eye point of view. And, and uh, I think it's, I feel that is ready to kind of start, um, um, I wouldn't say mixing, but starts to have a good influence of each cultures. Mm -hmm. and, and the British uh, garden culture is really, you know, appreciated in Japan, that uh, each flower, each um, uh, species of plants are celebrated in, in the way that Western people put, you know, uh, a, a bunch of, um, plants together and that's one way of um, not one nice way of looking at our, 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 our species and planet and space mm -hmm. and environment and, and in Japan it was a little bit more extreme in that sense uh, and also it was heavily linked to the Buddhism idea and Shintoist ideas and, and when that context is removed um, mm. it, it, it becomes a kind of soulless no from my point of yes. view mm -hmm. but uh, i'm i'm um, in this uh, you know uh, european uh, environment so you know we remove remove that kind of philosophical or religious aspect but i think plants are kind of universal mm -hmm. <laughs> where yes, everybody yes, yes. can appreciate and and, and uh, really learn from mm -hmm. um our ourselves, our beings, uh, and 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 um, I thought that was quite an important uh, point in this chalk garden. Is mm. how, how do we merge these two cultures? Yeah, yes. Mm, mm. And and uh, when 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 and when Japanese storm gardens removed from the Japanese context. Mm -hmm. yeah, Yuichi, 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 can I ask you about your uh, temple garden that you designed? Yes. When you when you were looking from the inside to the outside, on the left hand side, there were a whole series of it looks like wood, like a little oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really that was really intriguing. So could you just describe what that was about? Because that, I... that, that is uh, that is a uh, dead fern. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. They're, they're dead, and then and, and they are they they don't well basically they're dead, and but we found it extremely beautiful that. Uh, dead plants can still have its kind of uh, feature that I don't know why it was standing but they all mm. had this falling yeah uh, so, they, so they were completely posture. dead they weren't dormant they were dead completely dead yeah completely dead and okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. No, no nothing no treatment right. to can, it. I, can I add to that if I can you, mm. you said not dead just dead you said prehistoric <laughs> They were, oh, yeah. prehistoric, they were prehistoric ferns, weren't they? They were. Yeah, they yeah. were. Oh, and, I see. Yeah. And, and and I think in a temple context, I found it really fascinating when everything is got, you know falling, and, mm. and we don't mm. really understand that was dead, but it kind of captures your eye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when when you stand in a distance, and and when you learn your mm. curiosity, you're drawn to it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, when you're drawn to it, you start to realize the surroundings and the relationship to the buildings and the space and the air and the garden. So uh, sometimes it, it's important to have a kind of focus point, you know, um, mm. like uh, 
rock gardens in Luans in Kyoto, they also, you know, they have mm. you know, 11 mm. stones and that draws you to look at one and then you yeah. realize surroundings. And, and we, we took that kind of um, aspect to, yeah. to, to have that. Um, I think the wonderful thing about both gardens, you know, your collaborative garden and the and your temple garden and and in general, your approach is the balance between simple elements and knowing when enough is enough and that you could have taken them all the way across. But no, you had them just on one mm. side. And and it is that restraint and that balance, which I think um, is 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 an art form in itself because it's very easy as a designer to panic and overdo it and 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 it's interesting that the two of you collaborating on the chalk garden that you are disagreeing about some things and and you know you're you're kind of uh you know discussing things and you have the do we wash the rocks or do we leave them green and all that kind of thing so it's yeah. an interesting process and it's quite it's been interesting to listen to you both talk about your both perspectives on that garden and how you work together mm. um but, you know, I think I think when you look at some show gardens and I know somebody and Cleve West is absolutely brilliant at this is t having space, just leaving space. And especially for show gardens and concept gardens, people panic and think got to put more in, got to throw more at it. But actually that calmness of space, um, I think, is really strong. You know, that, 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 that the, 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 the voids are as important as the masses in, in, in a lot of uh, cases sure. I think. yeah yeah and yeah. and that is really an art form so I, I congratulations to both of you on on that we've got one more um practical question about how did you address the irrigation on the garden so obviously yeah how did you water those plants <laughs> not easily okay yeah. so so, yeah. Uh, so uh if i take this question you uh, uh if you don't mind um because it was a vaulted ceiling and we uh so there was a there's there's hollows underneath um, there was no drainage and it's so many asshole, so many things that we had to overcome. So on certain days it was cold. Uh, it wasn't as, you know, as warm. And other days when the sun would come around and there was no clouds in the sky, it would be baking in there. Mm -hmm. So obviously with bamboos, they, they, they curl. Mm -hmm. As soon as they 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 have drought, they curl. So you mm -hmm. need to give them a lot of water to bring the balance back. Um, so we had to contend with that. And because all the plants were in the pots as well. So um, we just had to make dishes. Uh, uh, dishes underneath of uh, uh, bags so that we could water and just yeah so, so like little yeah, reservoirs so, yeah, yeah 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 so yeah. that we can yeah so we can water um, and and one I think maybe on one or two days we're so uh, uh, panicked by the the the, the well, so much panicked but we knew that we had a time scale issue mm -hmm. um, that we forgot so we we had to spend like virtually half a day just watering the bamboos bit by bit by bit by bit to get mm -hmm. them back into the into good condition. Mm -hmm. And I'd be interested to know from both of your perspectives how important you think conceptual gardens are in mm. our world. So from the architecture world and landscape architecture world, I mean, both of you, you know, what, how important do you think they are to our art form? Um, so, go, you want to go ahead? I think conceptual gardens are everything. Um, and, and the reason why I say everything is because from what gardens used to be and where gardens are, people have to push boundaries. And I'm not saying that I'm the biggest boundary pusher, but if we if we don't um, try to look at what we have in a different way, then we get stagnant. Mm -hmm. And that stagnancy in whatever kind of design field you're in um, mm -hmm. um, becomes a problem. It becomes a problem for uh, industry as a whole, because mm -hmm. um, even though we're doing stuff for ourselves, we, you know, there's people that are designing for other people. And I think just through through human nature, we've got curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. We have the curiosity when we're a child we go to school and they get taken away from us you know we conform and then we get us to be adults and we conform even more of oh I don't want to be seen out of place I don't and but sometimes it's them juxtapositions of being out of place that create new and yeah, spark yeah. imagination yeah and, and what about interest. you Uichi what do you think about conceptual gardens I mean conceptual gardens um I I never thought that was a conceptual because um, because I, I can talk about it in this way. I can tell the story of how, how we came about uh, uh, this design. It, it probably feels like conceptual, but uh, at the end, when, when everybody looks at it, they don't know about this. Mm -hmm. And they don't yes. necessarily have to know about these, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, they always feel that something is a bit different from uh, usual gardens and that's yeah. for me that's already enough uh, yeah. and, and, and I, uh, so 
that's not uh, for me the concept. Concept is about storytelling. Yeah. And 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 um, think there is a storytelling aspect in this garden. Mm, mm. But also without story, this this garden stands by itself, which I think uh, is a um, kind of strong. I, I believe it was kind of strong uh, uh, um, a result. Yeah. And, and, we, and, and sorry, can I, can I just touch on that as well? And I think, you know, the, as much as the, the plants and the idea of a Japanese chalk garden, obviously, you know, these Japanese plants wouldn't survive in chalk. So it was all conceptual um, in that kind of sense. But what we were trying to, I think, Yuichi, I, I, if I can speak maybe for both of us, but do correct me if, I'm, if I get it wrong, that we 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 wanted to put in something which was cross-cultured um, that um, evoked about what Japanese garden was about um for the festival but i think a lot of our focus was about how do we put this these elements into this space to make it super super interesting to grab people's attention so there's so many different leads on 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 on, on putting this together mm. so many and and i think Luigi, how long did we did how long did we have putting this whole thing together from putting it down on paper it was a couple of months wasn't it? was it about two three months yeah something like that yeah. two mm. three months of paperwork and then five days of install so not long really <laughs> no, yeah. no no yeah. no no yeah. 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 yeah 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 and and um Jeanette Cole's asking a question uh, which I I think I understand the question is working in a glass structure did something unexpected occur outside and seen inside I I guessing what she means is does the view from the outside change anything or unless there was unless she knows something that we don't that something unexpected happened i don't know <laughs> so i guess it's the you know your view from outside looking into a glass structure did that were you conscious of that when you were putting it together were you going outside and looking in or were you more focused on this um movement through it um we did not think too much from how it would look from outside, but we knew that the glass house would be filled with bamboo because mm -hmm. of its sheer volume. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, when, when the, the lighting is you know, lit, I think you know, it would look like, uh, I don't know, terrarium or something. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and which I thought was quite uh, good enough. But um, um, funny enough, this uh, videographer who made our uh, chalk garden movie, she was always interested in the view from outside. Wow. And, and um, that's why, in, in, you know, if you look at my website later, um, it, it, can, it, it tells the story, of, you know, picture tells the story of the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she was more interested in looking the context from outside and looking in. Yeah, yeah. Can I add to that? Oh, sorry, Yuichi, you have to. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, um, when, whilst we were putting it in as well, um, um, I did notice that the elements and everything that we were trying to uh, concept, oh, to, to design inside, they didn't show from outside. Um, and I think that was lent, uh, that, that was because um, looking from outside, everything was turned 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. So when you look across something from 45 degrees from both sides, all you're seeing is instead of seeing something straight, everything starts turning mm -hmm. and everything starts overlapping. So instead mm -hmm. of seeing your bamboos like that, you just had a green mesh. Mm -hmm. So it was mm -hmm. a total surprise um, from what, yeah, totally different. From, from, and then from walk, walking through like a, a promenade, when you walked through that space, it changed as well. So another question, just before we all say goodnight, is um, Anna Senko is asking, in design, have you adhered to the traditional taboos from ancient Japanese garden making? Um, I think I'm naive enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say so, straight no. <laughs> so um, I, I, you know, uh, I just take it from my experience. I'm sure if Japanese gardener sees it, there, you know, there's mm -hmm. always rules uh, in, in, in uh, you know, the way that uh, things are composed. But I think. Mm -hmm. You know, having done so many flower arrangement, Japanese flower arrangement and the tea ceremonies, um, maybe that's the reason I came out. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think the beauty of this project is this cross-cultural uh, meeting yeah. um, that, you know, was put, put together quite quickly and happened, you know, quite quickly and was very spontaneous. So um, I think it's very exciting. And I think you both to be congratulated. And um, it's, lovely, it's been lovely to hear your story and listen to how you, you know, describe 
the process. Um, so no, thank you very much indeed. It's been it's been lovely having you both. And I'm sorry I got your geographical locations a bit wrong. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> we're all here. Considering we're, considering we're crossing cultures, I need to go and study a map. <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. Anyway. Yeah, but no, it's it's great. It's great that you've been so honest about the experience and that you're still talking to each other and you're still smiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 no, maybe I'm more too, I mean, too, probably over serious and autist, you know, the way autist is. So it, mm. was, it was actually quite a good balance. It was, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, you know, so we, we look forward to more collaborations. Yeah. yeah. Have you, yeah. Have you, are, you, are you dreaming up anything else, you two, or is it, are you just uh, not yet? No, no, we, we want to do something together as long as mm. there's an opportunity. Uh, yeah, and yeah. It doesn't really I matter if it's uh, UK or Europe or yeah, States. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'd say come and, come and stir things up at Chelsea. Come on. Oh, God, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> come on, bring it on, yeah. bring it on. Bring it on, yeah, yeah. We're the, we're the, we did speak about that. We have spoken about that. So possibly, yeah, possibly yeah, no, in, I'd... what are we now, 2002? Yeah. So 2004. Yeah, I yeah. think is the next opportunity. Yeah. Okay, okay, so lovely. Well, listen, thank you both very much indeed. It's been great having you on. And um, there's been a lot, I'll send you the copy of the comment box because there's some lovely comments and thank oh, yous. And thank you. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put that in an email to you both. And um, thanks everybody for tuning in. And, and um, it's lovely to see everyone again. And we'll see you next Thursday see you evening. Next Thursday. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you everybody. Really and everyone keep well, keep well. And you, and you guys, all, all the right. best. Take thanks, care. Thanks, Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.